Our gospel reading tonight is from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17, and verses 31 to 35. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Again, this is the word of the Lord. As I think all of you know, during the season of Lent, my Sunday morning sermons have followed the ancient Israelites as they faced a variety of temptations on their wilderness journey to the promised land. In many ways, that journey is a parable for our own lives. We also experience times in the wilderness when God seems absent and our very survival is at stake. And in those times, we face the same temptations they did. Thankfully, God leads us through them all, and eventually we all come to the promised land of God's salvation in Christ. In reading the three scriptures for tonight, however, I noticed another temptation that we sometimes face in the promised land, in times when things are going well, and the wilderness is in our rear view mirror. And that is the temptation to forget. 
It's worth noting, I think, that all three of the scriptures tonight emphasize remembering. Each one contains instructions for passing down, a story or an instruction for future generations so that the people of God will collectively, for generations to come, remember what God has done. In Exodus, when God gave Moses the Passover instructions, he included the annual commemoration for the event before the event had even happened. You're going to do this every year and pass this on to the next generation. God called it a lasting ordinance. And in Paul's letter to the Corinthians in the second reading, he said, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. And he explained the importance of remembering Jesus' death on the cross through the sacrament of communion. And then finally, in John's gospel, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he urged them to remember this act of service and to make it the standard by which they measured their own faithfulness to him from then on. I've set you an example, he said, that you should do as I have done for you. All three scriptures emphasize remembering. The simple act of remembrance is vital to our faith. But it's tempting to forget. In the promised land, it's tempting to forget what God has done for us. For one thing, it's tempting to forget because remembering is painful. Remembering God's salvation in the wilderness, remembering God's provision in the wilderness means also just remembering the wilderness. It means remembering the dark and difficult times in our lives that we would rather forget. It means remembering the abyss of grief, the uncertainty of chemo, the anxiety of unemployment, the sadness of depression. Yes, God provided during that wilderness, but barely. And we would just rather forget the whole thing and not go back there in our minds and in our hearts so it's tempting to forget. I think it's also tempting to forget at times what God has done because some of God's actions and some of God's teachings that he's given us in the past are, well, frankly, they seem a little outdated to our modern standards. Some of the Old Testament commands that were given during the wilderness journey seem embarrassingly arcane today. I mean, after all, times are changing, right? Maybe we should change along with them. Maybe God helped you many years ago in a way that now seems old-fashioned and you'd rather forget it. Maybe it was a miracle that now in hindsight seems hard to prove or explain. You think, was it really the miracle I thought it was back then? Do I really share that with my family and friends? Maybe it was a time when your faith was strong, but even though it was strong, it was mingled with some other beliefs and ideas that now in hindsight you feel were quite wrong and incorrect, things you've moved on from. Whatever the reason, there are times when it's tempting to forget God's past help when it no longer fits with today's sensibility. And then finally, it's tempting to forget just because it's hard. Along with God's gracious salvation comes a number of commandments and instructions, some of which are hard to do and therefore tempting to forget. 
I think just a few examples will suffice. Love your neighbor as yourself, Leviticus 19.18. Welcome the stranger into your land and treat immigrants like natives, Leviticus 19.34. There shall be no poor among you, Deuteronomy 15.4. When someone strikes you, turn the other cheek and let them strike the other side too, Matthew 5.38. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God, Matthew 19, 24. And then my personal favorite, love your enemies. That's not a metaphor. It's not a parable. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, Matthew 5, 44. It's tempting to forget these hard and costly commandments. But we must remember. Because when we forget how God loved us, we forget how to love each other. Those two things always go hand in hand. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. This new commandment to love one another is why we call this Maundy Thursday, which again means Commandment Thursday, and it's a command we can't follow unless we remember how Christ has loved us. When we forget how we have been loved, we forget how to love each other. And this is why we come together around the Lord's table. In the bread and the cup, we remember the body and the blood of Jesus who loved us to the end, and together we are literally remembered into the body of Christ. We are put together here. Communion is, is the assembly line of the church, joining us to Christ and binding us together in love so that the whole world will know exactly whose disciples we are. So tonight, lest we forget God's love for us. May God lead us once again to Calvary, to the cross on which Christ died, and ultimately to the empty tomb, and to the promise of eternal life in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.